understand that when Jesus did something, it was the will of the Father to heal. It was the will of the Father to raise people from that. It was the will of the Father to bless people. Amen. Today, um, I want to share with you about divine healing. I want, to, I want to encourage you about what does the Bible have to say about divine healing. Now, before I go there, I need to make sure that I, I qualify some things. I have been a pastor since 1996. Wow, 1996. And uh, that just, that just kind of like, that just shocked me, you know. And um, I have gone through a metamorphosis in my theology. When I graduated f from seminary, I left with the viewpoint that it is the will of God that people can be healed. But then as time has went on in my life, you know, um, sometimes I saw people die. Sometimes I saw people, you know, the, the things didn't change in their lives the way I thought and the way we were praying. And so I began, and then I began to hear other th teachers from more of a uh, conservative point of view that begin to say, well, you know, healing is not for today. Healing, healing really has stopped. Healing has stopped with the last apostle. You know, just like all the gifts of the Spirit has stopped with the last apostle. So there is no more healing. The reason why there was healing in the Bible was the reason there were healing in the Bible was so people can come to know uh, who Jesus is and for the early church to establish a foundation, right? And when, when you pray for somebody and you don't see somebody get healed or you see people who they say they love God and, and they're in a consistent uh, pain, uh, hurtful place in their lives, their pain, their hurt, you begin to question really and truly if it's God's will for people to be healed. And so I went through that, but I have made a full circle and I've come back as a pastor to believe that it is the will of God for people to be healed. And I've come to the conclusion that the reason why many people are not healed, and I know what I'm about to say right now are very challenging words, but you remember, I've been doing this since 1996. I had to process this because the Word of God should never bring condemnation, but the Word of God should bring clarity, correct? And we must be the kind of people that are, that are willing to, 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 to listen and to also go back and search the Scriptures for yourself and see if what is being said is the truth, because a lot of people says, you know, are you one of those eva TV evangelists that claim to heal people? No. I am saying today that the Word of God has the power, amen, and the Holy Spirit himself has the power to heal people. Come on. I am not saying that I am a healer. I am serving the healer, amen. I believe in the healer. His name is Jesus. Woo, I just felt the anointing. Felt the anointing. Just hit me strong right now. And so the, we need to understand that the secret things of a man's heart belongs to the man and belongs to the Lord. And there are many people who are not being healed. And I'm not, listen, I am putting this as a blanket. If you're experiencing some form of, form of ailment, please Consider some of the things I'm saying, but don't blanket and assume that it's for everybody, okay? Take what's for you, okay? But a lot of times, it is because, you know, I can look at a person and say, well, I prayed for him. Why well, pray for her and why she's not getting healed? But I don't know if that person in their private life, how they speak. I don't know in that private person's life if they're holding on forgiveness in their heart. I don't know. What's going on inside of that man's heart? The only person who knows what's really going on in that man's heart is that man himself or that woman herself and the Spirit of God. So there's some things only heaven one day will reveal to us. And I don't believe God's going to reveal other people's business to you in the first place. Right? God will talk to them and explain to them why certain things happen. I am come to understand that Jesus Christ, here's how I look at life. Jesus Christ came to give me life and to give it to me more abundantly. The devil comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Anything that is trying to kill, steal, or destroy my life, I see the fingerprints of the devil in it. Therefore, I begin to resist it. I do not believe 
that as a parent, that if my child does not obey me, that I'm going to put cancer on him. That's not a good God. The Bible says, here's my first point, every good and every perfect gift is from above. Amen? So God is the giver of what? Good things. Okay? So we know God is not the one. He says, God does not tempt people with evil because he cannot do it because he doesn't have evil in himself. Amen. 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 So somebody says, where did evil come from? Evil started when Lucifer took his eyes away from God. That's pride started everything. Pride started everything. He exalted himself. And when you move your eyes away from God, guess what? That's when Satan has now become the originator of he starting to say, hey, I understand the goal. If I get people from serving, taking their eyes off of God, I can get them to walk in sin. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is taking your eyes off of what God says to do. Amen? I want us to walk in health. I can tell you, when I, I have never been sick in my life, never been sick, but I experienced this silly little thing that happened last year in my body. It called gout. And this gout, they call it the rich man's disease. It is the most stupid thing to happen to me because I just like too much of meat. <laughs> I ate too much of meat and ate too much of, of drinks that have sugar in it. And guess what? There was no pill. There was nothing to take it away. All I had to do was flush it out by eating the right thing. So there's a lot of sickness that sometimes even happen in people that is not even the devil, but sometimes it's just not having understanding of health. How much you know drinking water is a good thing? How much you know getting good sleep is a good thing? How much you know not holding anger in your heart is a good thing? How much you know being joyful is a good thing? Being joyful alone releases endorphins in your body that is good for you. Some of you just start smiling right now. Just start smiling. Because I know I'm not trying to be silly, but it's proven that when you smile, you release chemicals in your body that is good. When you're angry all the time, you dry up. Your bones dry up. That's what the Bible tells us, yeah? And now we're, science is saying these things. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Let's read this verse. Let's read it all together. Ready? Read. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means that God is consistent. Jesus is consistent. So when people say, you know, well, Jesus healed in the Old Testament. Jesus healed in the New Testament, but now he stopped healing. No. He is the same. He's the same. Let's go to Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. Now, uh, just to, to stir you up to see that I did study hard for this subject, you know, and I, I want to show you some things here. Do you know in the Old Testament, there's the story of Miriam being healed from leprosy. There's the story of the widow's son being raised from the dead. There's a story of the Shunammite woman, son raised from the dead. There's a story of Naaman healed from leprosy. There's a story of Hezekiah being given 15 more years, okay? There's a story of Job being healed from affliction. In the New Testament, we have stories of the lame man being healed by Peter. We see the, the many people being healed through the ministry of Peter. We see many signs and wonders being done, healings through Stephen. We see the revival in Samaria being done by Philip. We see uh, Tabitha raised from the dead by, by the apostle Peter. We see the crippled man at Lystra being raised up by the apostle Paul. We see Paul himself being left for dead, being prayed for, and being raised up in Lystra. So I showed you the Old and New Testament, and we'll study that more in detail. That healing has happened in the Old Testament, New Testament. But if, in the next few weeks, I'll also give you information about what happened in the early church age. Of all the different writers that talked about what God did in the early church age. And I'm sure in this room there's many people who also have testimonies of a healing God. Amen? Amen. And so what we want to do is we want to build faith in this room about God being a healer. And it's, no, it's not just about, well, God is a healer. Because a lot of people would never challenge that. But what, God, what people would challenge is, would God heal me? Would God heal me? And so let's look at Exodus 15, 26. Because in Exodus 15, 26, this is called a redemptive passage. What is it called? I'm going to talk to you on a little higher level today because I do want you to educate yourself today, okay, in scriptures. 
Redemptive scripture means that in the Old Testament, if you go to a Jewish person, they know God as Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah means the self-existing one. What does Jehovah mean? The self-existing one. But then they will add something called redemptive names. Redemptive names are different parts in the Old Testament that describe who God is. You remember when Moses said to God, who should I say send me? What did he say? Say, I am that I am. I am whatever you need me to be. God is a husband. He's a wife. He's a son. Come on. He is whatever you need him. He's a healer. He's the righteousness. He's your shield. He's your protector. Amen? And so there are redemptive names for God. So this is a redemptive scripture explaining God as the great physician. The children of Israel is going to meet and know God as the great physician. The redemptive Hebrew name, because remember in the Old Testament, it was written in what? Hebrew. Translated into the New Testament into what? Greek. Went in and moved from Greek into Latin. Moved from Latin, went into what? German. German went into then all the other languages. You understand that, right? That's just for some of you students of the Bible. Amen? So we're, they're going to know God here today as Jehovah Rapha. The word Rapha means the Lord that heals. What does the word Rapha mean? The Lord that heals or the great physician. Amen? See, the Trinity of Israel was now encountering a God that was silent for almost 400 years. They're coming out of Egypt. Moses is now beginning to explain and revealing God to them. Amen? And now they're knowing God now as the God of our forefathers. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's a healer. Woo, come on now. Just hold on to that. He's your healer. Say, my God is my healer. He healed headaches. He healed anything. Amen? And he said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandment and keep all his status. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptian. For I am the Lord who heals you. Keep that right there. Now there is a misunderstanding in the translation down on the bottom where it says I will put. That gives the view that God can put sickness on people. No. What the right translation, and you need to go home and study this for yourself, it means I will not allow. I will not allow this. Now, let me prove this point to you. When Jesus was asked by his disciples, show us the Father, Jesus says, have you not been with me so long? When you see me, you see who? The Father. For I do nothing of myself. On my own. Whatever I do, I do it because the Father has told me to do it or give me permission. Question. Let's think. Everybody put on the thinking hat. Ready? Come on, do it. Let's do it. All right. Ready? Go. Number point. You remember Jesus went and healed people? Well, if God was the one who put the sickness on those people, Jesus was being a direct what? opposition to the Father's will. Remember Jesus raised people from the dead? Then if the Father wanted that person to be, to be dead, why is Jesus going to go and raise him? God the Father, he doesn't have mental health issues with all due respect. So we need to understand that when Jesus did something, it was the will of the Father to heal. It was the will of the Father to raise people from that. It was the will of the Father to bless people. Amen? Amen? And so we need to move away and don't let the enemy hold you down. That's the reason why I hear even preachers tell people to say this prayer. If it be thy will. The only time. Everybody say the only time. The, only time. Ooh, the anointing is strong. The only time you pray if it be thy will is when you pray the prayer of consecration. Because when you pray the prayer of consecration is you don't know exactly what to do, but you are giving yourself over to God and says, God, whatever you want me to do, I will be doing it. Amen? But the Bible says that we need to know the will of God. And as we know the will of God, that's where faith starts. 
Faith cannot be just something you pull out of a hat. The will of God is what established you to be able to have faith. The will of God is where you can look at a man and say, brother, it is the will of God for you to heal because the word said it. If you can't find it in the word, then you cannot stand in authority to resist. But I will show you throughout scriptures that it is the will of God for your needs to be met. It is the will of God for your family to be blessed. It is the will of God for your body to be healed. I said it is the will of God. But if you would, God is the same. He says, if you diligently, if you diligently, that's where the problem is. You ask most people about healing, most people don't have the word in their hearts. Most people have not been diligent to find out what God says about the situation they're going through. But if we will become diligent and begin to give ourselves over to the word of God concerning healing, I'm telling you, healing is the children's bread. Amen. And you say, well, that was a... That was the Old Testament, you know, that wasn't Jesus saying that about the Jews. Well, how much, you know, we are spiritual Jews. We have been circumcised in our spirit, amen? We've been engrafted into God's kingdom because of Jesus, amen? So healing belongs to who? It belongs to me. Come on, say healing belongs to me. You must just get to the place in your life where you start saying, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and how dare you, devil, try to intrude into the place where God lives. God does not share his home with you. So leave my body in the name of Jesus. Sickness, leave my body now in the name of Jesus. My body belongs to God. It has been bought with a price. What is the price? The precious blood of Jesus Christ. You need to get to the place in your life. I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful, but you need to be a little gangster in the spirit. Come on. Now, some of you didn't get what I meant by that. Means you just need to be a little tough. You just need to be able to say, I refuse to let this sickness take over me. I refuse to sit down and die in a bed. I am not going to stay here. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to, devil, you are not taking me out. The, man, you don't make me start preaching here. With long life, with long life, God says he shall satisfy you. Everybody say it with me, with long life. Don't be saying, well, my mama died when she was this age, so I'm coming up to that age, I'm going to die too. Do you believe what your mama believed? Do you believe in a healer? Yes. Come on, how much you know the blood of Jesus separate all the lineage? Yes. All the drama that your family had. When I got saved, I've been redeemed. Come on, somebody. Yes. Stop saying, well, my mama had dementia. I'm getting all I'm going to have. No, you don't have to have dementia. You have the mind of Christ. Yes. Man, I was for somebody. I don't know why I said that. Well, you know what? My, my daddy, my daddy, my daddy, you know, suffer with this. So I, my, my, I got to be like my daddy. No, 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 no. You are a child of God, born of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Come on. You have a future, people. But I'm going to tell you something. How much are you going to contend for it? And so my first point, no, I'm telling you, because, you know, as I get older, you know, when I was a little boy, I used to say this, you know, I used to say this, so I hope nobody get offended when I say these things, but it's, it's important. Stop trying to take the, 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 the negative heritage of your family onto yourself. Stop taking it. The blood of Jesus Christ has the power and had already broken that off of you. You got to place yourself back in it. Don't go there. You've been redeemed. Say, I've been redeemed. redeemed. The greatest hindrance to God's children enjoying enjoying divine healing and health is a lack of clear knowledge of God's will in the matter of healing. The question is not one of God's ability to heal, but his willingness. Most people question if God is willing. To heal them. Let us seek to know God's will in the matter of his willingness to heal you. Does he think it wise to heal you? Or is it part of his plan for us 
in this present age. That's what most people say. So you help people say, well, brother, in God's wisdom, we don't know. Maybe when you go through this, you will become more humble. Maybe when you go through all of these pain, maybe you will just get closer to him. That's what, that's what people say about it. Or, well, brother, this might just be your cross to carry. <laughs> maybe this is what God's plan is for you. This is the way he wants you to die. Now, that sounds real holy. Now, I'm not trying to be, listen, guys, I'm, 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 I'm talking to a thousand people on the television right now. This sounds real holy, but it's not true. Just because something sounds pious. Listen, that's why a lot of people feel that you walk around with a hole in your shoes and walk around with your head. I know the worst gossipers, the most people with a bad attitude is the ones who look the most quiet. And I know some people who are just loud, but they live the most righteous life. Just because you know who you are in Christ and open them out doesn't mean that you're a prideful person. Amen. Just because you walk around quiet and just let the devil beat you up, that doesn't mean that you're holy either. Amen. That just means you have lack of knowledge. Amen. Amen. Amen? And so let's just break down all these religious walls. That's why most people don't go to church. Because, I mean, how do you want to go to church? I mean, you tell a young guy, well, you know, the reason mama go to church every week and mama's sick all the time. Well, Sonny, that's my cross to carry. So that dude says, man, if I fall in love with Jesus, I don't want to carry that kind of cross. That's not a good theology. Okay? The importance of finding the scriptural answers to these questions is emphasized by the fact that according to one of the great preachers on healing, F.F. F. Boswood, Listen to what F.F. Basu says. He says, it is impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing which we are not sure God offers. He says, it's impossible to claim your blessing if you don't know if God offers it. Because the power of God can be claimed only where the will of God is known. Say that with me. The power of God can be claimed only where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Say it with me. Faith begins where the will of God is. That's the reason why you reading your Bible is one of the hardest things for most people and is one of the most spiritual things. Because the word of God has the God power, God's power, that if you read this word, that's what the Bible says, the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's able to pierce and divide the soul, the spirit, and, the, and, and, and of the flesh. Amen. The word is able to do that. So the enemy, have you noticed that you can't sleep sometimes? You say, let me read my Bible. The moment you read your Bible, you fall asleep. Because the devil don't want you to read your Bible. Because here, the moment I read my Bible, I find my identity. It's Your Destiny is made possible by the prayers and generous support of our friends and partners in your area. Together, we are reaching people around the world with the love of Christ. To become a partner, visit our website at destinydominion.com or call us at 416-782-HOPE.